Friends, uh, welcome to Christchurch, which as you know is closed apart from personal prayer. I'd like to be recording a service here today if you take part in your homes across Swindon this Sunday and in the days that lie ahead. Remind you that we're on a sermon series, How Then Shall We Live? And today our theme is God and Conscience, Salvation in Society. Big theme, and David will give us a great sermon later in our service. Reminder, the earth is the Lord's, the world and all that's in it. Please follow the service on the PowerPoint prepared for us by Janet French, the beautiful slides to enjoy. The bold type words are yours. The world belongs to the Lord, to the yeah. earth and all its people. How good and how lovely it is to live together in unity. Love and faith come together. Justice and peace join hands. If the Lord's disciples keep silent, these stones would shout aloud. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. We sing, Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father.
you, Lord, the gifts we receive this week in terms of people's time, talents, and money. Help us use those gifts here in Swindon, across our Bristol diocese, the further afield, for your glory's sake. And now our children's talk, which I gave you today. I think we all love our old shoes. One of my old shoes at home, a bit battered, but I still occasionally bring out my running shoes when it's a very muddy and rainy day. We also love a good story. And that wonderful hymn, children, Great is Thy Faith, was written by Thomas Chrishol, who said he was just an old shoe. Never say just an old shoe. Why did he say that? Pretty soon he became a Christian. 28, he became a pastor. But he retired only after a year or two of ill health. But he wrote many poems, and one became this great hymn, Great is Your Faithfulness. Three verses we sung, children, in that hymn. First of all, in the first verse, God's faithfulness revealed in his word, his living word. Secondly, faithfulness revealed in God's creation, all around us, his wonderful autumn colours. And thirdly, God's faithfulness revealed in our lives. And so as I hold up my old shoe, whatever challenges, trials, disappointments you might be facing right now, this hymn reminded me this week, and can remind each of us, whatever age we are, children at school and us as children of God, that God's promises are true, that he never changes, that his compassions never fail, that his faithfulness to us in Christ Jesus is more than good, it's great. God doesn't need incredibly gifted or wildly famous people proclaim these truths from his word. Just faithful ones like Thomas Chrisholm, just an old shoe, a special child of God, whose poetry is him, we sung today, has brought so much joy to so many people. Great is your faithfulness. Oh God, I'm able to trust those promises to be true here in Swindon, whatever age we are, this day and this week. A reminder to follow the bold type words on the slides. Remember God was with us, wherever we are in our homes, or for myself here in Christ Church. We're about to celebrate today the presence of Christ in word and sacrament. Let us turn to the Lord and confess our sins. Remember how much God loves us and wants to help us with his faithfulness. As we say, Almighty God, in the community of Christ Church and in the presence of God's people, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you, cared for your world, or respected your people as we should. We own our responsibility and pray for your pardon. Amen. And praise God for his forgiveness and his love in these words. May God forgive us, Christ befriend us, and the Spirit renew us and change our lives. Amen. And a special prayer for today. <laughs> Heavenly Lord, you long for the whole world's salvation. Stir us here in Swindon from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us, across our town, new hope that all creation will one day be healed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading read for us by Anne. The Old Testament reading is from 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verses 8 to 18. At that time, Solomon held the festival for seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from Nebo Hamath to the Valley of Egypt. On the eighth day, they held a solemn assembly, 
where they had observed the dedication of the altar seven days and the festival seven days. On the 23rd day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their homes, joyful and in good spirits, because of the goodness that the Lord had shown to David and to Solomon and to his people Israel. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. All that Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he successfully accomplished. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, doing according to all that I have commanded you, and keeping my statutes and my ordinances, then I will establish your royal throne, as I made a covenant with your father David, saying, you shall never lack a successor to rule over Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament Bible reading, Luke chapter 11 and the first 13 verses. Jesus praying in a certain place, after he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us the time of trial. And Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up, give him anything, because he is his friend. At least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. Ask, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who searches, finds. Everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our theme at Christ Church this autumn is, How Then Shall We Live? And this week we're considering God and conscience, the salvation of society. 
Last week I looked up the estimated number of people in this country who have dual citizenship. The figure quoted is 731,000, but I think that figure is wrong. It probably doesn't include most of those whose citizenship is also in heaven. We have dual citizenship. We are citizens of both earth and heaven. In church we tend to concentrate on our heavenly citizenship, but this series, How Then Shall We Live, is looking at how both fit together. It was Paul who reminded the Philippians that our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lonely bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Great. Hallelujah even. But that is in the future. What about the 70 plus years, hopefully, of our citizenship on earth? How, as Christians, do we contribute to the salvation of society? How do we make a difference to the world we live in now? In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The questions before us today are, how do we remain salty? And what are the good deeds that others should be able to see? In our Luke reading, Jesus keeps it simple, with three action points in just one verse, verse 7. He says, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you, search and you will find, knock and the door will be opened for you. Elsewhere in the series this autumn, we've been thinking about our world and the care of our planet. Today we are talking about our society and the care of those who live on it. So how do Jesus' three action points work in the context of the salvation of society? What does that even mean? It means, surely, as Christians, how do we make a difference to people, people near and far? The answer is we ask, search and knock. So firstly, ask. Who do we ask? This theme, how then shall we live, is a good question which perhaps we should periodically ask of God. Do you remember the account of, the account of Peter walking along the sh shore of the lake, asking Jesus about John, who was following them? Peter asked, what about him? Jesus basically told him, that's none of your business, although he was rather more diplomatic. But he gave Peter a commission to feed my sheep, to be a pastor. So perhaps we should periodically ask of God, what about me? Asking, what should I be doing now? It might be a question of asking in a new stage of life, about beginning a new career or employment, or indeed at its ending, retirement, or any significant point in our lives. Asking, for example, about the use of our resources, of time, or finances, or health, whether improving or decreasing. Perhaps this is a good time in the turmoil of COVID-19 to ask of God, as Peter asked about John, what shall this person, that is me, do at this stage of my life, in this time, in these circumstances? Secondly, to search or seek. Jesus challenges us to be aware of some of the issues of our world. In the turmoil of 2020, what touches your heart? Starting with our own country, is it about poverty, hungry or neglected children, domestic abuse, homelessness, refugees drowning in the channel, or whatever else it may be for us? Last month, I read an article in the paper, and I quote, The Duke of Sussex has admitted that his privileged upbringing as a member of the royal family meant he had no understanding of unconscious racial bias. Prince Harry said it took him many years and the experience of living in his wife Meghan Markle's shoes to recognise the issue during a conversation with Black Lives Matter supporter Patrick Hutchinson, who rose to fame after he was photographed carrying an injured white male counter-protester to safety at a BLM march in London. Basically what he's saying is he was blind or unaware of this particular issue. So what do we pray about seeking? As the song puts it, open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. Yes, 
but we also want any specks, let alone planks of unawareness in our eyes, to be removed, so that we don't find ourselves unwittingly, unconsciously, colluding with unfairness, injustice and bias. So is, is, is God asking us to seek out more about these things, but preferably without blind spots, difficult as they may be to see, with the privileges we enjoy, and with much evil hidden, even in plain sight. In his letters, Paul quite often talks about striving to keep his conscience clear before God and others. Dual citizenship again. We need to be open to be shown by God and others what may be our blind spots, which might be tradition or ignorance or prejudice. Open our eyes, Lord, perhaps to what we have never seen before. And thirdly, after ask, seek, comes knock. Living in someone else's shoes. This is the classic definition of empathy. This is not just feeling sorry for someone. Empathy is trying to enter their world and understand what it's like for them, which hopefully results in action, being salty and doing those good works Jesus speaks of. So, what awareness should we have as Christians with our heavenly citizenship but also living in the world, and how do we bless society? Very briefly, let me mention just four examples. Firstly, black lives matter. The counter-argument is that all lives matter. Very true. But it's the ethnic minority people who disproportionately suffer from inequality and unfairness, as demonstrated in low wages, poor housing, less employment opportunities, disproportionate custodial sentences, casual put-downs, slurs and humiliations, to say nothing of overt abuse and violent hate crimes. Is this something we need to ask, seek and act upon? At least to be conscious of, and then to act. Secondly, slavery. Slavery was abolished in Britain in 1833, but it still goes on today. The Office of National Statistics reported that there were 5,144 cases of modern slavery offences in England and Wales in the year ending March 2019. At the same time, recognising it is very difficult to produce an accurate figure due to the fact that victims are often hidden away or una unable to leave their situation. The numbers are probably much greater. Is this something we need to act, seek? Is something we need to ask, seek, and act upon. Thirdly, LGBTQ prejudice, particularly sadly in the church. But the church is trying to address this with a living in love and faith launched this week by our archbishops. I know the Bible verses which seem to condemn this, but I also remember the tragic case of Lizzie Lowe, age 14 who committed suicide in September 2018 because she believed her feelings were sinful and feared the church would not accept her. I would recommend Vicky Beeching's book, Undivided. Is this something we need to ask, seek and act upon? Then there's women's votes. Given the votes in 1917 but still marginalised and suffering prejudice and being discriminated against. This talk could go on for hours, about the hundreds, perhaps the thousands of issues of injustice which exist in our world. As Christians, we run the risk of compassion fatigue, overwhelmed by these needs. So God speaks to different people about different issues, ones that are close to our hearts for particular reasons. For each of us, there are things that need the saltiness of our Christian involvement shining a light, the love of God, into dark and murky corners, and showing our compassion and empathy as followers of Jesus in all sorts of ways. Why? Because Jesus says, knock, act, don't just walk away. Perhaps we are all challenged about how then shall we live, to have a God-given tender conscience and a God-given tender heart, a heart that aches for the pain and neediness of the people of our world, salvation of society. We can be overwhelmed by these needs. It's not given to many of us to make major changes, but we may be the only person in our small corner 
who can shine a light of love and compassion to someone that no one else can reach. So let us ask God about two things. <coughs> Firstly, do I have a tender conscience and heart? And do I need to see things that I have been unaware of up to now? And then secondly, what should I be doing about Jesus' three action points to ask, seek and knock? Let us pray. Lord, open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch him and say that we love him. And may our love be demonstrated both as good citizens of earth and good citizens of heaven, as followers of Jesus. Lord, help us to listen and hear you and respond as you lead us. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we thank you that in these times, when we feel very alone, you are always with us. Your presence means that we are never alone. We thank you that this week we have been able to enjoy our homes and gardens in this mild autumnal weather. We pray for people all over the world who are suffering in isolation and we give thanks for all those volunteers who are helping, perhaps delivering simple essential needs like food or medicine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for your blessing on families and children, especially if they have to isolate at home. For students at university, who might be lonely and missing family and friends as they study alone in their college accommodation. We give thanks for all the innovations in online learning. Help all those involved in education as they are also learning to manage the situation and to find new ways of working. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. yeah, our prayer. We remember all who are in special need of your love at this time. We pray especially for residents and staff in care homes, for those who are missing visits from their loved ones, for all who are sick, especially those with COVID at home or in hospital, for families and partners worried about someone they care for. Lord, let them feel the comfort of your loving arms around them. We pray for all who bravely fight to preserve life in intensive care. And we give thanks for the vaccine which is being developed to fight COVID and we pray for its success in fighting the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. In our preoccupation with fighting disease, we continue to pray for peace in our world, for world leaders and rulers, that they may have the wisdom to know and the courage to do what is right, for men and women the world over, that they may have justice and freedom and security. We pray especially for calm in the United States of America and for the President-elect Joe Biden. And we pray for the hungry, for the disadvantaged, for the victims of conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. yeah. our prayer. We remember all those who are ill in body, mind and spirit. We pray for strength and well-being for John Day, Janice Rahman, Judith Hawkins, Brenda and Ken Appleby and Ray low. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Lord, we bring before you those who have died and all those who mourn, all those who have lost husband or wife, children or parents. We pray for the family and friends of Graham Trinder, who was shot in Swindon this week by the police. We also remember the family and friends of Jerry Martin, Maureen Williams, and Dorothy Perham, who have recently died. We remember those we have loved and lost. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. 
in your light shall we see light. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, accept Set these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. As we share God's passion place of the whole society, our creed together. Friends, do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him. him. Friends, do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him. him. Friends, do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We, we believe, believe and trust in him. him. This is the faith of the worldwide church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come now to the peace. The light of the have next door to me, Sue Mansfield completed icon, which we launched at Martin Palmer's webinar website just three weeks ago. This amazing icon the black Christ gives the image of God's love for us in a fresh way. The words and the icon will be Christ in love a couple of weeks. Come and pray here quietly. We'll have done this week. If you can't get here, the article and the icon will feature in our December, January magazine. So with all those with justice across the world, we are the body of Christ. In one spirit we're baptised into one body, to then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life together. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so with this icon before us, the song, Open Our Eyes, we want to see Jesus sung for us by our music group. May God bless us as we open our eyes to Jesus' love today. Jesus in our Holy Communion. Friends, the Lord is here. His, His Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give God thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. O God of mystery and promise, you invite us to discover you in the intimate places of ourselves and our lives. You invite us to discover you in the complexities of our humanity. You call us beyond ourselves. Place of imagination, the unending cycles of day and night, seasons of life and death. With all creation, we join in the song of your unending glory. 
Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you that in Jesus you make known to us the wonder and richness of our humanity. We give thanks for his life-giving love, for his healing touch, for his vulnerability and for his gentleness. Before he gave up his life, Jesus shared our humanity, his flesh and blood with his friends. As we do now, what Jesus once did, let your Holy Spirit move among us to settle on this bread and this wine. They may be become for us the body and blood of Christ. Jesus took bread and gave you thanks for it, broke it and said, This, this is my, my body, given for you. Do this, this to remember me. me. So too after they had eaten, Jesus took wine, gave thanks for it and said, This, this is my blood, poured out in love for you. Do this, this to remember me. me. To proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. again. Come now, Spirit of God, and as we eat and drink these bodily things, make us one body, food for the world, one blood to be poured out for the life of all. Touch us with your gentle creativity and fire us with longing for the new age of justice and peace. We ask this through Jesus, who gave his body, that we might be one, and his blood, that we might find new life. Amen. Amen. Remembering how much this meal cost our Lord Jesus Christ with the poppies on the altar, remembering those gone before us, their sacrifice for us. How God longs to pour Jesus' love and faith and hope into our lives. Above all, his faithfulness to us. Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus taught us to be bold and say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And together we pray. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the table, friends, not of the church, but of the Lord. It's made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you have much faith, you have little. Come, because it's the Lord who invites you. It's his will, those who want to know him, should meet him here in Christ Church, where I am right now, and in your own homes where you are. May you know the Lord Emmanuel with you. Conscious that I will share bread and wine now. May you spiritually know God's passion and God's love grace where you are. And may you be close to him. God bless you at this very holy moment. So thanksgiving for all God's gifts shared with us, above all his faithfulness. Let us pray. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you have put, put your life into our hands. hands. Now we put our lives into yours. Take, Take us, us, renew us, us and remake us. us. What we have been is past, what we, we shall be through you still awaits us. us. Lead us on. Take, Take us with you. Amen. Amen. 
And now may the Spirit of God, who brooded over the waters and brought order out of chaos, find a home in our hearts and settle our minds as we continue today and that tomorrow we may wake and live to God's glory. Amen. Amen. The wonderful thought in mind, our closing hymn, To God be the glory, great things he has done. sharing our souls with you and for your prayers and all your support. Any practical thing we do to support you, please be in touch. Our Keeping in Touch scheme is there to remind you of practical support and our prayers and love for you. Any creative ideas for Advent and Christmas, pass them on as we work out our plans for these coming very important weeks when our theme will be comfort and joy. Friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honour everyone. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. And may the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy and the peace which is fill your hearts and your lives. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you, upon God's world, our country, our town. All those whom we love, pray for 
serve and remember today, this week, and always. Amen. When the worship ends, the service begins. <laughs>